Markets are trading with Tim Larkworthy from Fig Securities. Tim, thanks very much for joining us. Now, tell us about US bond yields because they're flat, aren't they, um, at this kind of lower end of uh, the Trump post-election trading range? Yeah, that's right, Helen. And uh, look, I think overall uh, interest rates are holding, as you say, towards the bottom of the recent range. Not quite as low as they got to in April, but certainly uh, holding what has been a, a, a low level overall. Um, I think, as you point out, it's uh, pretty much an acceptance that the, the market overall has now concluded that the Trump factor in terms of uh, his ability to cut uh, red tape, uh, introduce tax cuts and to increase infrastructure spending is likely to meet a, a heavy gridlock in Washington. Uh, and uh, as such, yields are, are holding lower as, as a result. Yeah, so what are they at? Uh, Ten-year US yields are holding at the 2.25, not quite as low as the 2.17 level they were in April, but still very much towards the bottom of that range. And I think the, the risk is if they were to push down and, and break that 2.17 level, that would be a strong technical indicator that the likelihood is that the, the, the rates are going to move lower. Yeah, now what about the, uh, the seven-year notes? Well, they had an auction last night, Helen, uh, which went re very well. Uh, they issued $28 billion worth of bonds, uh, and that was uh, at a yield of 2.06, which was the lowest they've had since uh, February, which just shows that I think that there's strong demand for US dollar bonds overall still. Yeah, so it's interesting. There's strong demand, and yet there seems to be perhaps a... Um, when you said a gridlock, do you mean that's a negative sentiment? No, it's more just the, the ability of Trump to get his legislation through the Congress. Yeah, uh, but I mean, that, surely that engenders a kind of a negative sentiment that everything that was promised may actually be very hard to deliver. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, if you remember when po Trump was first elected, uh, yields rose quite sharply. In other words, prices came off. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, we saw the 10-year the US yield get to a high of 2.6. Now, that was based on the premise that the economy would be stimulated by uh, the Trump legislation. Yeah. Uh, but that looks as though that's uh, not likely to happen this year. It may happen next year, but it's not happening this year, so the, the market is adjusting for that. All right, so they haven't given up hope completely. They just think the gridlock may be there and that it may be delayed. Absolutely, yes. I think that's fair. Yeah. So the FOMC minutes released earlier this week, what did they show for you? Look, I think it shows that uh, the committee is starting to, to look at the possibility of <coughs> unwinding some of the, the $4.5 trillion that they accumulated on the balance sheet since the GFC. Yeah, so uh, sort of shrinking it, really. Well, yes. It's, look, I think the, the, the real detail of that is yet to be declared, but uh, obviously there's a lot of, uh, of, of, of stock to unwind from the balance sheet, and the risk has always been that that will have a negative impact on markets. So I think the market will be watching it very closely to see what sort of uh, agenda they have and how they intend to do that. Exactly. Well, when you say the Fed, you know, might gradually unwind this uh, $4.5 trillion balance sheet, how does it do that? I mean, that's been accumulated since the GFC, hasn't it? Look, it certainly has, and that's where the jury's still out. And I think you know, until we see the, the real uh, colour of the money, if you like, of, of how they propose to do it, uh, the market will be fairly cautious. Uh, it's early days. We, we, we still haven't seen the colour of the, the full colour of the detail at this point. Yeah, OK. So how is the market sort of approaching that? Are they happy with it, comfortable with it or not? Well, I think at this stage they're comfortable with it, but uh, because I think the market realises at some stage they do have to unwind, the, start unwinding the balance sheet. It can't stay there forever. Uh, but again, as I said, I think it'll be more in, in the detail as we, as we see it later on that will really give the market confidence as to how right. they're going to do it. Yeah, sorry, Tim, just um, that June hike still very much um, on track? Yes, look, this, this time last week uh, the market was pricing in a 65% chance of it occurring. That's now back up to 80%. I think we can pretty well lock that one in. If the Fed had decided that the market was misinterpreting uh, the, their intentions, I think they would have flagged, uh, flagged that by now. So I think we can lock this one in. The interesting thing will be what they do further down the, the track. I think if uh, uh, at this stage it looks as though September uh, is, a, is a mild possibility and then possibly December after that, but maybe the market's readjusting to the pr prospect of only one more after June. All right, and what about Aussie yields? Do they always follow the US? 
Look, not always, but in recent times there's been a strong correlation. So I think, you know, as long as the US is uh, holding yields at the, lowest, the lower end of the, the range, we'll probably align with that. Uh, and as I said, I think the risk is if the market were to move through these technical levels, then, uh, then we'll also move lower overall. But um, uh, the 10-year yield in, in Australia at 2.43 is, um, is holding pretty steady at the moment. Yeah, and the Aussie dollar? Uh, last I saw, it was in the mid mid 74s, yeah. um, and I think it's again, it's uh, it's caught in a fairly tight trading range at the moment. All right, Aussie issuance, what's going on there? Um, the Liberty Financial had an issue earlier in the week, uh, which went very well. Uh, they raised a total of 200 million dollars uh, at a yield of or a coupon of 5.1 percent. Um, I think the the expectation prior to the S&P downgrading that, that would trade at a margin of 2.75, but with the S&P downgrading, it just increased to 3.25. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. Where will that? Uh, that was following the S&P downgrade. Yes. There was an S&P downgrade across 23 uh, banks earlier oh, yes, in the week. Oh yes, of the banks. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that impacted Liberty as well. Uh, and as a such, the, the the spread blew out marginally from the the 2.75 guidelines to the 3.25 it eventually was uh, issued at. All right, Tim Larkworthy from Fig Securities. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Helen. Well, that's all we have time for.